Hi, Hongli. How are you? Hey, Gloria. Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Have you been watching the Alex series lately on LinkedIn? You know, I have. Um, it's actually quite interesting. Well, yeah, of course. Anything specific um, caught your attention? There was actually, there was, I think it was the second video. I can't remember now, but one of them had to do with pairing Oh, pairing. Yeah. And I suddenly realized that, oh my goodness, even as a leader, it's a little bit difficult. And I think I do that. Don't we all do that though? <laughs> I know. I know. It's so difficult to not slip into it um, yeah. because we have this, we have this one person in our team who's been around for a really long time mm -hmm. and she tends to Uh, just aggravates people it's so interesting she's very sweet and she's lovely but she just has a way of interacting with people that drives them nuts well i think we all have a friend or a co-worker <laughs> <Yeah>, probably, <laughs> probably. Yeah. um and so it's really sometimes hard not to just complain about her even for me it's difficult because she gets on my nerves sometimes um, and I've tried to work with her a little bit and have conversations with her and give her feedback. And sometimes it works for a little while and I think it's been getting better, but it's still, I still catch myself talking about her, you know? Yeah. And what happens when you do that? While I'm doing it, I, I, I think I realize I shouldn't be doing it and then it's really difficult to stop. Um, but there, I have caught myself a couple of times where I've just gone, okay, this is not helpful. This is not going to solve the problem. And I, I then try to sort of reverse my way out of it and just change mm -hmm. the conversation or trying to, try to make it more constructive rather than just talking about it or complaining about it. And so it's a little bit difficult to determine like when are you talking about it to solve a problem mm -hmm. and when are you just complaining, I suppose. Yeah. And you said some, sometimes you just realize that it's not helpful. Um, tell me a little bit more about how did you find that to be not helpful? Well, I mean, any long, long-term complaining is never helpful, right? It's like, I realized like talking about it doesn't, it's not going to fix it. I have to do something different. And mm -hmm. what happens sometimes is when someone else is struggling with her, they come to me to complain about her. So I, I think they're expecting, <laughs> no, I think they're expecting me to make it go away or to get uh, to give them something or to I don't know I don't know why you know they come to me and they complain and I don't think they ever actually ask for me to talk to her because they know her so well and so it just becomes a complaining session so why, the, kind of, sorry? then here comes my question like we all know complaining is not helpful no. why is it so addictive though <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very good point As far as I understand, it has to do with um, anxiety levels. Like when you're in a situation where there's something difficult going on and someone is aggravating you and you don't immediately know how to reach for a tool that's not complaining, anxiety is talking about it is the only thing that lowers your anxiety immediately. Mm -hmm. So after complaining, you feel a bit better about it because you've like discharged this frustration um, and the anxiety comes from in teams, people want to feel like they belong together. And when something happens that feels like it's pushing them apart or someone's behaving in a way that potentially can break it up or push them apart or create something problematic in the team, mm -hmm. the instinct is to try and pull things together. But before that instinct, it is to lower the anxiety around the fact that something might break up. And so that's just a very quick way of trying to lower your anxiety Uh -huh. but it's not a long-term solution unfortunately so, so what's going on with you know this situation you're having in your team right now so what's been happening is that people have been coming to me complaining about her and I've been going to her and trying to have constructive conversations with her without telling her that people are complaining about her 
Okay. <laughs> sort of helps, but you know, in some of the instances where I think the personal relationship is a little bit more difficult, that's I think not happening. And mm. so for them to come to me to go to her it doesn't work. Um, I've also tried to um, bring two people into a conversation and facilitate the conversation between them, like resolve. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I sit very far away when that happens. <laughs> um, and it's it's it depends on the people. Sometimes it works, but it is a much trickier thing to 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 facilitate. Mm -hmm. um, I think it creates a lot of anxiety. But I do think that when they're spoken to each other, it lasts a bit longer. Somehow, there's something more in that approach that allows for their behaviors to be a little bit uh, healthier um, mm -hmm. for longer with each other. So speaking to that person is better than speaking about that person with someone else. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But still, it's not the ideal solution. It works a little bit, but not entirely. Yeah, it works a little bit, I think, because it creates the first step in them learning how to talk to each other about something that's very difficult and anxiety inducing. And afterwards, I think they feel like they've done something together. But if it goes wrong, nothing really changes. Mm. So yeah, it's definitely a step further, but I don't think it's the solution. So ideally, what would you like to have happen? Well, I mean, if I, if I, this is something I need to try because I think what was in the video was like that she brought these people together and then had this discussion because it was getting in the way of the team functioning and it was getting in the way of the success of the team. Mm -hmm. And of course, I suppose there are other ways that you can do that by marginalizing the person or I don't know, and that, but that's not the point. So if the whole team is struggling with it, I, I, I guess the trick is to bring them all together and then have a conversation. But even that is quite tricky. Um, and one would either need outside expert advice or I need to figure out how to do that. Yeah, you can just imagine if you bring the whole team together to talk about one person's problem. That definitely brings up anxiety. Yeah. But like you said, it might be the most efficient way to solve the problem. I'm, I'm going to give it a try. I think what I need to be really careful about is not by making it a bashing session, you know, not making it a session yeah. complaining about her, but rather making it a, a session about how the team can function more, better, if we have different ways of communicating and being with each other. Yeah, that's um, when, I'm sure that's when your um, great planning and facilitation skills can come in <laughs> well let's let's uh, let's hope so but that's that's the plan that i'm going to follow now is to get the whole team together to talk about the five elements of a high functioning team mm -hmm. um, of a high performance team i might even get them to do the five q so i can see what they're all feeling about the team in terms of where we're doing well and where we're not doing well mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to that particular thing um it might be uh, how I set it up and how we speak about it and how we try and find a, a non-violent communication strategy to, to share how we're feeling about certain things happening in the team. Um, and hopefully that can um, help everyone understand how everyone's behavior is impacting the team, not just one person, because you know, other people are perpetuating that behavior by talking about it. Yes. And they need to understand that part as well, or their responsibility for that part. Mm -hmm. And where, where would you go to take that 5Q assessment? <laughs> well, on the ChangeCraft website, changecraft.consulting, there is a pop-up that will have you take the 5Q, which I haven't done with this team. So I'm definitely going to do that because I think that's going to be a good first step in understanding what the team is um, thinking about those five elements. Yes, very exciting. I hope you can come back and let us know how did that work. Yes, I'm going to do it. And then I will speak to you about it when it's done and how it went. Thank you. Hi, right, Gloria. You take care. Thank you. You too. Bye.